Ohio State loses to Nebraska. I have a new goal when Ohio State comes up is that we talk about the other team first because I've been told that during the Ohio State recaps, Ohio State always loses and then we end up talking about Ohio State more. Uh, so we should talk more about the winning team like we do in the other ones. So let's comment on Nebraska first and then we can get to the JR really dislikes his team segment and all the people who like to hear Ohio state fans cry, uh, they can tune in for this part. So let's focus on Nebraska first. Uh, Kent, what were your thoughts on Nebraska beating Ohio state 83 to 69? Uh, it was all ranked mast the whole game. It felt like uh career high, 34 points. He was doing pretty much everything that he wanted to do. Um, I started getting really impressed with the half court sets that Hoiberg has put in at Nebraska because they started running, you know, I, I guess I maybe haven't paid attention to it as much as I should, but their stuff that they ran against Ohio State was super creative, and it was mainly to get their hot hand open, and he kept getting open every time they ran their stuff. So uh, credit to Coach Hoiberg, but also, you know, Mast has to hit those shots too, so credit to him. I mean, he was on fire. Um, for me, uh, the the turning point in this game, because uh, Ohio state did have a little bit of a lead in the first half. It kind of felt like they were in control for a minute, five minutes to go right before halftime. It's Tomanaga. He hits the three. And when Tomanaga hits a three, the crowd goes crazy. His and only three of the game. And, th but the thing is the crazy part is like, I, I took a note while that happened. And I was like, it feels like momentum has shifted just because he's the one that hit it, you know? Right yeah. after that, Mast hit two more before halftime. And, you know, they were obviously excited about that, but the momentum had already shifted at that point. Yeah. And from that five-minute mark where he hit the three, it cut the lead from five to two. And they didn't even get the lead off of that. But just the momentum that they got, they were able to take a eight-point halftime lead uh, right after that happened. So um, just too much in the second half. Like I said, Mast looked like he just could not miss a shot. And uh, Nebraska is tough to beat at Nebraska. They've proven it multiple times this year now. I think, if I'm remembering right, I think Creighton is the only one that's beaten them at, at Nebraska. Yeah, they're 13-1 at home, yeah. Yeah, so uh, besides Purdue, that's the hardest place to play right now in the Big Ten. I meant to look that up before we got on, is who has the best home records in the... I mean, uh, Nebraska has the best home record in the Big Ten. Um but I don't know who has the best home records in all of college football. Uh, Lee, what were your thoughts on the game? Wait, isn't Purdue undefeated at home, though? Oh, wait, yeah. Because no, no, they, they, they lost both their games on the, on yeah, the they uh, did. Northwestern at Nebraska. Okay. All right, so second best. Sorry. It's all good. No, Wisconsin is 10-1. But Nebraska Tied. is 13-1. So best. That's better. Second best. Uh, Confirm. Sorry. Sorry, Lee, I'm taking up your time. Go ahead. No, good. No, no worries. No worries. Um, Yeah, I know CJ Wilcher is, wasn't listed as a starter, but I mean, he played 30 minutes in this game, had 16 points. So, um, and, and like uh, Kent was saying, anytime Tommy Naga seems to hit a shot, just everybody in the place just goes crazy. And I, I don't know if they're like, they're shocked, which I don't know why they are shocked that because he tends to always seem to hit a big shot. Like you know, when it comes down to it, I'm sure he's probably the guy that Nebraska probably wants taking a shot. But like uh, like Kent said, Mass was just crazy. 13 for 17 from the field, six for eight from, from three. Um, they just didn't have an answer for him. So um, I, I don't know if Nebraska's built for like a, a deep run and can really challenge Big Ten teams later on down the road. But, I mean, we've seen they've, they've beaten Purdue. So I think they can play with anybody. But um, – they can also probably play down to the level of anybody as well. So um, I don't know if this was more of a Nebraska played extremely well or just Ohio State's what we thought they were not that great, unfortunately. Sorry, JR. No, okay. I've <laughs> um, now I'll comment on Nebraska and then we'll get to uh, my Ohio State woes. I was really, really impressed with CJ Wilcher. I've seen some of his um, uh, numbers and stuff like that over the past few games, but he, you know, he's been good, but he hasn't like, popped to me uh in the games as much uh recently uh but in this game he popped uh really really big him and ranked mass just seemed to be those two guys with the presence that were able to to make everything happen for them and um you know 
credit to rank mass they kept doing that thing where they passed the big man up you know at the top of the key and uh, a few times they backed off of him and he just shot it and made it and then there there was another time or two where he was literally like probably two or three steps back from the not Steph Curry range but two or three steps back from the three-point line and he still just takes it and makes it um so I mean I don't know like part of me is upset with the Ohio State defense on that but then the other part of me is like how do you like, how do you defend that? If the guy is right. just going to catch the ball and pull up from a two or three steps back from the three point line, like, I mean, at a certain point, you, you can't just be up on a guy the entire time. So, um, you know, Mass, he was just ridiculous. And this one and, and CJ Wilcher, they were talking about it on the broadcast. He really does have such a pretty jump shot. Uh, the way he's able to elevate and come back down and, and really flick the wrist with it. And he's, it, it looks really, really nice and it goes in most of the time too. So, uh, it looks really, really nice. And, um, I think that he is a, a really nice piece, kind of an underrated piece to this Nebraska team and what they're able to do. Um, did we talk enough about Nebraska? Can we talk about Ohio State now? I will say one more thing about Nebraska. I think Bryce okay. Williams, uh, needs to be more consistent. There was a yes. moment oh, yeah. in the game uh, yesterday where he had what looked like, a will just say, a temper tantrum uh, for no reason, really, other than like he they were on a fast break and he threw it away and lost his mind over it. And you just can't do that in basketball. There's so many plays. You just have to move on to the next thing. And I uh, I don't know. I just sometimes pick up on some of those social cues from guys when they're in games. And it just feels like. Uh, you know, if he just took a deep breath every once in a while, because he's shown flashes where he can go on, he could be super streaky. I remember one game, I can't remember who they were playing exactly, but he had 17 points in the first half of a game this year. And then the second half he had two. So um, if he could even that out a little bit and just be a little bit more consistent and uh, trust his teammates, maybe, I don't know. If, I don't know what the issue is. I don't want to say he doesn't trust the teammates. I'm sure he does. But um if we if there was some more consistency from Bryce, then I think that it would bode well for the Cornhuskers overall going forward. Yeah, they he scored double digits in the last three. So if you're looking at the stats, it's kind of like, you know, um, well, he has been consistent, but you're right. When you watch Bryce Williams, you know, it's like the consistent gameplay. It's not so much the numbers. It's just yeah. like the consistent gameplay of playing within the offense. And, and like you said, part of it is trusting his teammates too. Uh, he might very well trust his teammates, but it doesn't always look like he does, uh, when he plays. So, so yeah. Uh, Lee, you have any more thoughts on Nebraska before we move on? No, I was, I was going to comment on Bryce Williams as well, but can already hit it. So. Nailed okay. it. We were actually just trying to keep talking about Nebraska so we could skip the <laughs> Ohio State part. I understand that. Well, we have a comment here, so we're going to get to it eventually. Fisherman, Fire Holtman. <laughs> this is this is the battle cry of Ohio State fans right now. Um, he also says there's two teams that haven't won a road game yet in the league. Ooh, that's a that's a good trivia. Hold on, let me think one of, of this. One is Ohio State. Who do you think okay. the other one is? I have it right here, but I'll let you guys guess. Um. I'm going to look at the rankings. I'm not cheating. I'm just going to look at the rankings so I have all the teams pulled up. Is it okay. Indiana? No, Indiana's one and three. Dang it. That was my Lee, guess. Your, your turn to guess. Uh, go back yeah, and forth. Uh, we'll eventually get it right. Um, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Penn State. Got it. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. that, that was a smarter guess. Yeah. Uh, yes, Penn State is 0-4, just like Ohio State. They are 0-4 in this one. So thanks for pointing that out, Fisherman. Um, yeah, it's... It, Kick it's him while he's been, down, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. it, it, hey, Fisherman looks like he's an Ohio State fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I and I, I've been vocal about this. I, man, I, I like Chris Holtman, like, personally. I think that he is like a you know, probably like a really good dude. And, and he came on our channel and gave us an interview. And I really appreciate that. But for whatever reason, like his teams just, they press so hard at the end of the games. And when other teams go on a run, they just, they look like they get so down on themselves. I give credit to Ohio state. They fixed the shooting issues for themselves in this game. They didn't shoot as poorly from three point land. Uh, but it was the other team that they <laughs> apparently Did they not fix. ignored that part of their practice where they said, okay, let's fix the offensive shooting issues. And then it was like, Oh crap, we forgot to practice defensive shooting 
you know, practice in this one because Nebraska just went off in this one. Um, and, and at the end of the day, like, I, th- I think that this team has good players. Um, they just, they can't seem to put it all together. And I don't know what that is. I, I hesitate to, I hesitate to blame coaching because, you know, players are, are their own, you know, people and they make these decisions and stuff like that. But at a certain point, I don't know where else to go with some of these issues in coaching. Um, and I'm not trying to say Chris Holtman is a bad coach. I just don't think Chris Holtman has found it yet. And at a certain point, Fisherman is right that, you know, if you can't find it, at, at a certain point, you have to move on from the guy, uh, whether you believe in him or not. So, um, uh, Lee, what are your thoughts on uh, on the Buckeyes right now? Yeah, I watched. I haven't watched many of their games. I did watch their Michigan uh, game last week. Um, yeah, they're kind. Of, they kind of are like Maryland right now. It's it's when they struggle to shoot the ball, they don't obviously they don't win games. I think the only difference right now between them and Maryland is is. Maryland always seems to put a, a, a good defensive effort in. Um, yeah. And obviously uh, you got to score more points than your opponent does. And they just kind of can't figure out how to do that right now, unfortunately. So um, I'm kind of like you, I like Holtman as a person. I'm not sure he's necessarily a good basketball coach. And I think that's, that's where I'm at on Kevin Willard right now too. So I'm not trying to make this about Maryland, but I see a lot of similarities in the two teams. We got like a trio you know, here of like, we can all agree <laughs> that, you know, Holtman and Willard and, you know, name other ex coach. You can adopt uh, Juwan in this case, Forrest Kent. Uh, <laughs> I'll adopt him. I'll adopt him. Anything to get him out of coaching. I'll, I'll make him my child. That's fine. <laughs> you just want him out of the big 10, right? Yeah. 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 He's making, um, us, look, he's making us all look bad. There you go. What, what's your take on the Buckeyes right now, Kent? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I have defended them like, most of the season because of how strong they started and I was getting really excited about them. And, um, you know, after last season, I was really hoping that they were going to make a NCAA tournament push. And then, um, the Michigan game happened and anyone that loses to Michigan, um, immediately is off my radar because that just can't happen. And that was, I think, I really think that that was the turning point for their season. Um, if they could have won that game, maybe they can turn around and, uh, you know, go battle out at Nebraska because they have some more confidence. But, you know, I, I'm just really worried about them the rest of the way. They have some really tough opponents coming up. Um, if I'm looking at this right, which I think I had just pulled up their schedule. Yes, I did. Northwestern, Illinois, Iowa. I mean. At I Iowa, mean, too. Not at It's him. just a brutal go for them uh, the next couple of weeks, and it's just like, Man, I just I, I'm worried about them. I'm worried about you, Jr. And I'm worried about them. I I am one though. I will say that I am. I don't think that uh, Holtman is that bad. I'll just put it to you like no, that. I don't, I don't think, think he's, that he's yeah. he's ready to be like fired. I know Ohio State fans. They're I feel like they're ready to fire people at the drop of a hat. They want to ri- fire Ryan Day right now. Dude's one of the best coaches in college football. So I'll tell you who, um, does, who is ready to fire somebody. Tricky's probably ready to fire Chris Holtman. He is a big, a big proponent for firing. So really, uh, yeah. Oh, dude, drop of a hat. Tricky, Tricky would probably fire Harbaugh from the Chargers right now. Hasn't even, hasn't even uh, <laughs> played would a game fire there, yeah. Lee Tricky, from the podcast. He, he, he would said something wrong. He, he would. He's he's threatened to fire Jordan. He's threatened to fire Jordan on air. I, I, I don't so. know. I love it. No, I think I, this is I just, just don't know who's take. coming in after that, though. If you fire him, who's coming yeah, in after that, Jr. Who do you I want to know. be Ohio State's coach? Dusty May. Oh, that'd be good. That'd, that'd be, be pretty good. good. I think he's probably Indiana bound, though. After Mike Woodson gets the boot, though, because he's from Indiana. Man, is everyone getting fired this year? Well, I think Mike Woodson's probably a year away, but if he keeps keeps his team going the way he is, uh, it'll probably happen eventually. Fishman also said Ohio State last road win was at Northwestern. That's where they play next. Uh, that's right. The Ohio State has not gotten a road win in over a year. Their last True. road win was New Year's Day of last year. Um, to so. be fair, they don't play year round, though. I mean, yeah. oh, no, that's true. We wish they did, but they don't. Look at January record for OSU. It's bad. Yes, I tweeted that out after the Michigan loss. Uh, January has not been. I think Holtman's had two seasons uh, where he's had a winning record in January. Uh, but why do people think? I'm just curious. Why do people think he's so bad? Like, well, the three coaches we've talked about right now, like 
Jawan Howard is clearly not an X's and O's coach. Kevin Willard is clearly a jerk. And uh, Chris Holtman, I just feel like people are just mad because he's not, you know, getting as many wins as they would like. But I don't feel like he's a bad basketball coach. I don't I know. Think, I think, honestly, I think a part of this plays into uh, – Football rules everything with Ohio State. And so when football isn't doing as well, it's like there's like a cloud over everything with Ohio State. And, you know, I know certain Big Ten teams will be like, oh, wow, Ohio State fell off. They've won 11 games the past three years. You know, right. It's like, hi, you know, it's how, me. It's me. <laughs> how spoiled are you? And it's like, yeah, I, I get that. And, and to a certain extent, yes, we are very spoiled uh, to think that 11 win seasons are, are falling off. Uh, but that's just the way that Ohio State fans look at things. And Ohio State fans look for something, you know, with a an ounce of positivity elsewhere in the school. Uh, and yes, that's exactly what I was going to bring up next. Uh, Fisherman or Roberts loss now struggling is why uh, the Oral Roberts. Lo- I don't think Chris Holtman will ever live down that Oral Roberts loss. Now, you know, I, I I personally look at that and I say, you know, Oral Roberts shot amazing in that game, and Max A. Smith was, you know, really freaking good. Uh, and du- Dwayne Washington had like one of his worst games of his career there. Um, so I personally don't hold that against Holtman as much. I look at it as Ohio State should be a tournament team every single year, um, or at least in contention for the tournament every single year. That's fair. In the past, Ohio State has fired their last three head coaches when they've missed the tournament two years in a row. Um, And so that's kind of what the precedent has been set at. And I feel like if you set a precedent, that's kind of what you have to go with. Um, And so don't get me wrong. I'm, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that I root against the coach. I hope Chris Holtman does figure it out because I think he can be a good coach. He does a good job of acquiring talent. He just doesn't always know how to put it together sometimes. Uh, the Oral yeah. Roberts loss cannot hold that much weight, though, because if we fired coaches every single time there was a bad NCAA tournament loss, then Purdue would have a new coach every year. Yes, we so, got it in. Yes. <laughs> Please happy about that. Um, well, I, I want I want to say this. Like uh, you said, like you don't think Holtman's a bad X and O's guy, but what do we what do we kind of gauge post- coaches on the how many times they win versus how many times they lose? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if the guy's not producing, then then it's time. But going back to the Oral Rob- Oral Robert loss, I mean, like look at what Abe Smith is doing now. He's the he's like the most he's the leading active division one scorer and he's killing it. Where's he at now? Texas, I think it is. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I mean, he's, he's a good player, but yeah, I mean, it's a bad loss, but every, I feel like every team's had a bad loss in the NCAA tournament. You know what I mean? So. Right. And I think the biggest thing with it was like, you know, Ohio state, like I said, they should be a tournament team or at least in contention of the tournament every single year. Uh, but Ohio State is one of those teams where they kind of pop up and they have a two seed or a three seed. And it's like, oh, yeah, this is our year. We can kind of have a deeper run in the tournament. And just so much of those hopes were smashed. And we've never like we've never gotten back to that point where we are a two seed or a three seed or something like that. Um, so. Yeah, and, and and quite honestly, the other piece of this is like, and I'm not trying to dog Ohio State fans here, especially not fishermen. I'm sure fishermen is very plugged in with all of college basketball, uh, but a lot of Ohio State fans don't really watch college basketball outside of Ohio State. Uh, probably don't even watch very much Big Ten basketball uh, because they they just they care so much more about football that it's like, oh, if Ohio State's on, I'll I'll watch it. But um, but you know, so when even when Ohio State loses to Nebraska who is a very good team at home, they say, oh my gosh, we just lost to Nebraska. That's one of the worst teams in the Big Ten. It's like, no, they're actually, you know, top (laughs) four or five in the Big Ten this year, probably, maybe even six. Um, But that's not, that's not the way Ohio State fans look at it. They say, well, I was just got blown out by Nebraska. Nebraska sucks. It's like, well, no, they didn't. Nebraska's not the team, the old Nebraska anymore. Yeah. Right. Uh, So, you know, that's a part of it too. I'm not trying to say Ohio State fans are stupid or anything like that. I just don't think they pay as much attention to it um fisherman i watched by more of a wrestling fan well there you go Ohio state wrestling <laughs> much better than basketball so one thing i've uh, learned uh from doing this whole uh you know covering if you want to call it covering the big 10 is that uh 90 of the people don't know what they're talking about and i'm one of them by the way i i include myself in that group it's just uh it's really difficult to have um 
you know, any sort of discourse at all with people when they're the love for their team is so connected to the the things that are coming out of their mouth. Sometimes uh, it makes it really difficult. But uh, hey, if you guys don't like Holtman, get rid of him. And uh, like I said, find somebody else that you think is going to do better. It's tough to win in the Big Ten period. So, uh, you know, those those uh, Matt Painters or whoever you want to compare them to, Tom Izzo, uh, whoever else you think is good in this league, they're not just growing on trees out there, man. It's going to be hard to find a better coach, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's and that's where my fear is, is like I always go back to, yes, we can say fire a guy, but we also have to think about who like who's that next guy. And of course, it's probably Aaron Kraft. I would bring in Aaron Kraft to coach the team because like he hasn't been around that program enough. I don't think over the years, you know? Yeah. Uh, Fisherman says most fans on Twitter want Jay Wright. Yeah, see that just speaks to how much oh, state fans don't really know. <laughs> Jay Wright is never coming back to college basketball. <laughs> um, and that that was the last guy who beat uh, Holtman in the tournament too. I think because that was Villanova when they were the two seed, and Ohio State beat oh who was it VCU or something like that. Uh, or no, um, Loyola Sister Jean. They beat Sister mm. Jean. That's right. It was over after that. You get, nobody beats Sister Jean and gets away with it. That's like, when you, that's like you get the Madden cover and you're cursed after that. You beat Sister Jean, you're cursed after that. <laughs> yeah. you're, done. you're done. All right. We probably spent way too long on uh, Ohio State, so we'll uh, spare ourselves here and get to the next one. Thanks for listening to the Big Ten Huddle. Please do like and subscribe. We appreciate that. If this was your first time listening, we are the Big Ten Huddle. We cover all things Big Ten football and basketball. We have a long episode every Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, all at 9 o'clock. So come in, check us out, get in the chat, let us know what you're thinking. We would love to have you join us and learn more about the Big Ten.